What's going on, everybody? It is Coach Greg Adams back in here with another video. Shout out to the Coach Gang for being in here, being involved, and being active on this YouTube channel. Check out my three books, The Free Agent Lifestyle, De-Evolution, and 52 Things That All Men Should Consider Prior to Marriage. The links are in the description box below. Also, all of my channels are demonetized on this platform, and if you want to see all of my channels, we have a great edutainment uh, feast for you here on this platform via the CGA brand, and also, all of the channels are demonetized, so if you're feeling like giving me a love gift for this information that you are about to receive, go ahead and hit those links that you see there on the screen, Cash App, PayPal, and Venmo, and all of that stuff, and or support on the platforms of memberships that are off this site. Yeah, they don't want you to hear this information, so the reality is we would appreciate you if you support it. But this is the best entertainment here on YouTube, indeed, and I'm about to give you some information that many men don't know about. This is the struggle that we have going on in this space. For the last five to ten years, we've been giving many men this information. Of course, we're shadow banned and hidden from giving you this information, and uh, a lot of people don't know. And unaware, like how could this happen? And how could it happen that Nia Long is going to receive $32,000 a month in child support from your boy, Emi Yadoka? Yes, $32,000 a month, and it could have been worse. And we're going to talk about this settlement that they reached, which is somewhat egregious if you think what 12-year-old young boy needs $32,000 a month. Well, we're going to tell you how we get there. And how we got there. All right, so if you've been living under a rock, Emi Yadoka was a former basketball coach for the Boston Celtics. You know, he stepped in some dog poop. He cheated. And of co- a lot of people are going to say he cheated, so he deserves this. Guys, there's no penalty um, for child support for cheating. All right, that, that's not even a factor. In fact, most states have no-fault divorce if you were married. Okay, and so cheating is not even a factor as well. And in fact, if women got penalized for cheating, they would probably very rarely see their kids in that manner and be paying men for child support. But that's neither here nor there. If you've been living under a rock, Emmy Yudoka um, reportedly cheated. And he, he cheated with a snow bunny. I see him. He got him a flat back Supreme. And he was putting hands on hips in the office. And I thought what he did was absolutely despicable. He earned his position on the 12 Sims of Christmas. But here he is, a married woman at that, which is another penalty. Yeah, he was actually functioning uh, very stupidly. But. That's neither here nor there. Well, most people don't know. He was in a relationship uh, with Nia Long, who is basically a supporting actress. She's not even a leading actress. She's a supporting actress. And people would believe that she's wealthier than she actually is. I would probably say not. And don't believe the Internet. That net worth is probably attached to some properties and things like that. She's a supporting actress in a small genre. You know, only really black community people know who she is and aware of her. And she mostly made cameos. I'm pretty sure she. you're going to tell me you love Jones and all these movies. These movies are pretty much cult followings. They don't have any. They didn't make a lot of money in the box office. And even if they did, trust me, she's not wealthy off of these movies. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Well, um, since then, it's been just a back and forth battle. I just want to update you here. Amy Yadoka has requested joint custody and visitation rights of his son with Nia Long. And of course, when people get separated, you know, the relationships break up. It all of a certain turns into a fight over physical custody and money when there's kids involved. Now, I'll just have to tell you, they were not married. They were basically in a relationship where she existed in California basically to work in the industry. She had the son there primarily, and he coached the Boston Celtics. He got fired, and now he's picked up by the Houston Rockets recently this year. Now, he's been coaching. You know, coaching is a job that you don't have really much time to dedicate to physical custody of the child, but he's going to try to do his best to get joint physical custody, and that was probably to minimize the blow of the child support, which we're going to get to here in a second. Well, Nia Long said, oh, oh, no, I want legal custody of my son, and because you're not paying any child support, which this is going to be a, a, a horrible problem for Emi Yudoka as to every month he's not paying child support. These are going to be tacked on as arrearages when you get to the agreement or the settlement. So this is going to be a problem for him. And going forward here, it says right here, uh, Nia Long and Emi Yudoka has finally settled upon their child support and custody battle. Now, we already know Nia Long is an actress. In the last two years, you've had COVID shut down the production industry in Hollywood. You've had Hollywood essentially dying on his last breath. And the movie industry is not what it was. And I'm sure there's not a lot of roles 
for black actresses these days. It's a very competitive role. She's above 50 or just about to hit 50 years old. So her prime is past for sure. She's not 1999, Leah. Um, she's not Friday jogging in the uh, jogging in the street knee along. And then you had the writer strike. So I would probably venture to say that she hasn't had much income other than residual payments, small residual payments at that uh, for her movie roles in the past. In the past three years, her income probably has been very much limited. And she probably smartly did not get much income in the past two years, knowing that this custody battle and child support battle was going to hit. Right. So she's probably strategically not worked as much. But Emmy Yadoka has made money and income. And also he's been now hired by the Houston Rockets. Of course, this happens after he was hired by the Houston Rockets. Can you see how this game is being played? All right. Well, what's the result here? Well, Nia Long and Emi Yadoka came to an agreement, which is a settlement, which means they went in and they negotiated this amongst themselves as opposed to allowing the judges to uh, uh, negotiate this. And that's a very important point because technically, technically, let me show you this right quick. Um, let me see if you can still, can you guys see this still on the screen? All right, you can still see this on the screen here. Um, where's my link to it? Uh, there's the link right there. Uh, she scores $32,500 a month in child support from a custody settlement. That means they agreed on this. And you would say, why would they agree on this? Well, number one, the custody battle probably wasn't going Emmy's way. Okay, It probably wasn't going his way. He's on the road. He's playing basketball. There would be no way feasibly that um, he can support a child, right, physically by being there and coach on and go on road trips and that type of thing. So he would have to do a great amount of parenting on breaks, like at the end of the NBA season and then going into the next season. So he really has a three month window, if you will, for him to catch up on parenting time. I had another link here and I don't know why I can't see it, but um, I'll just tell you what the link said. Essentially what the link said is, Oh, here's the link right here. Here's the link. It says right here, an equitable agreement. The finalized support figures is a downsize from the $56,389. My goodness. That would be typical of the standard calculation, given that Emi Yadoka's monthly disposable income is actually at the half a million mark. So 465804 Now, take into the consideration that Leah Long probably hasn't acted very much she probably was living off residuals, and she probably was planning to marry Emma Yudoka. That is a whole nother twist to the story. They're not even married. They weren't even married. But I think she was moving to Boston after his second year of coaching or second or third year of coaching. She was planning to move to Boston and leave California and pretty much put her acting career behind her. She was planning to move to California, I mean to Boston, to be with him. Unfortunately, the news dropped about him cheating uh, with the Mormon white woman, the flatback, and that put the kibosh on that. So essentially, she was ready to give up and move forward, marry him, move in with him. They've been living separately in this entire time, but they produced this child, and the child, they've been together off and on for the last decade. The young boy is 12 years old, so the good news for Emmy Yadoka is that this is only going to go on for the next six years. And he's going to have to pay this lump sum. Well, not even a lump sum. We'll talk about that in a minute. $32,000 a month. But they're saying that the calculation, this is actually a favorable judgment because the actual number was 56,000. Mm. Now, you know, you would have to ask, why did Nia Long take less? Well, sometimes, you know, you really can't get the correct amount of support, right? You can't get the correct numbers. And you might be battling over numbers. I mean, Yudoka might dig his heels into the ground. She might be saying, hey, he makes money over here and over here or over here. He might be saying, that's not actual money. That, that's, I don't own that. It might be tied into a business. Somebody might, might own the business. And he probably saying, hey, I don't have any of these sponsorships or any of these things that you're trying to, to calculate. And it might be difficult for them to prove it. But uh, Nia Long has an attorney. And um, they, they pretty much said, look, we gave Emmy Yudoka a deal. Sad part about it, the custody uh, situation that goes as such under the agreement, Long will have their son in her care 95% of the time in Los Angeles. Oh, and that's where this gets a little bit hairy for those who want to know. Yes, 
He probably will have access to the kid. The kid will have visitations. This looks like maybe a weekend a month or maybe at every other weekend. Of course, as the child gets older, he'll probably want to go live with dad. And she'll probably fight this dude tooth and nail to not let that happen. I'm pretty sure once the child turns about 15 or 16, child is going to be like, hey, I want to live dad's life. I don't want to be stuck under you while you're over here riding away collecting child support. I want to go live with my dad. I want to go be a basketball player. Maybe I want to be a coach. I want to live the life that 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 he's surrounding, right? And so she's probably going to fight him too for now. Why? Uh, she's going to lose out on this big pot of money. And Nia Long's career ain't getting any better anytime soon. This is her final, um, final uh, financial agreement that she's going to get of any significance and she probably making more than she ever did in her movie career. And I know people don't think that, but she's not that big time of an actress. Really only black men know who she is and black women, which is a small population of people. She's not that mainstream. Although she's appeared in movies in the mainstream, she ain't a heavy hitter out there. So this is a big, big financial coup for her for the next five years, but it's probably financial self deletion at the end of the day. Because if she blows this, it's going to be crazy. A couple of things here. People might ask, why did he pay her a lump sum? Well, number one, if he pays her a lump sum and she blows the money, she's just going to come back and get more child support. Number two, people are asking about a prenup. Well, a prenup doesn't matter because a prenup, number one, they weren't married. So that doesn't matter. Number two, you cannot negotiate child support in a prenup. The child support belongs to the child, technically, but it's always paid through the custodial parent and the custodial parent is the guardian of the funds and gets to disseminate them. How the guardian or the, the parent or co-parent or the parent, the custodial parent wishes. So she doesn't have to provide receipts. She can spend it all on herself. She can spend $2,000 on him and the rest on herself. She can save it for his college fund. There could be a couple of ways she can do it, but there's no laws to dictate um, what she spends it on. So the child support prenup has nothing to do with this. They were never married. They were considering marriage. And this is just basically a back end form of alimony. Number three, why is it so much Los Angeles? The child is going to be in Los Angeles. This case was not filed in Houston. It was not filed in Boston. It was filed where Nia Long lived with the child primarily for all of these years in Los Angeles. And everybody knows California's diso master, their child support calculator is absolutely ridiculous out here. And of course, all a woman has to say is, I'm not happy. <laughs> and she can get your money real quick. I got money. And here's another thing here people are wondering about. They're going, hey, well, listen, um, you know, if he would have got extra custody, would have mattered. If he got 50% custody, would it have mattered? Well, it wouldn't have mattered anyway in California. There's no cap on child support. And also, it doesn't even matter if you have 0% custody or 50% custody. If the income disparity is so wide, disparity is so wide, you're still going to pay child support. So I think that's part of the resolution that came forth in these filings right here. And you can look them up there. Um, this was a long custody battle. And obviously, the embarrassment of, of him cheating played a factor into it. Now, let me get to the cheating deal real quick. Cheating doesn't matter, okay? There's no penalty for cheating, meaning that you don't, if you cheat, the, the child support is not a, a, a penalty for cheating. It's not a, a thing that you would use to say, hey, you cheated, therefore, um, you should pay child support. Now, the woman who is seeking the child support can certainly say, hey, I've been hurt, I've been penalized, by me losing the relationship with you, I would have had more from you if I would have been with you. You cheated on me. I decided to not stay with you. So it's her decision, her choice. And therefore, she's going to use the cheating to weaponize the kids against the father. So this does happen. But again, cheating is not um, going to be considered in these things. And even in marriages, if you cheat, it's not really a consideration. The judge, you might lean towards consideration, but it doesn't matter in no-fault divorces. Again, they weren't married. Next point on this one is watch out for these women that are talking about um, they want to be strong and independent and all of this stuff. But when it comes to these deals, they want to run ninja's pockets. All right. They want to get in their feelings. They want to come in here bitter, vindictive. They want to make you pay. And then they're going to say, hey, she deserved it. There's going to be some men that say she deserved it. Well, no, there's no such thing as you deserve. All right. That's definitely some sort of mindset that needs to be restricted and stripped away from relationships because that's not a part of the relationship deal all right sometimes you win in a relationship sometimes you lose but it is not fair to be vindictive and penalize people for whatever your belief system is and say another person's uh deserves a financial reward all right that's why people are not getting married that's why men are getting their passports that's why men 
are boycotting marriage and going monk. That's why they're becoming free agents. That's why they're following the percentage of men out here that are putting out this content. But financial awareness is important because as I say, these two things, and these are original thoughts by me, women are, men are in love, women are in business, and free women cost the most. So with the reality of it is when it's not about the money, it's about love. But when the love is gone, it's about the money real quick, and you will find that out that m- women will turn to business after the love is gone or after they've been hurt. So this is where you got to be very careful in this because you will be like, hey, let's let bygones be bygones. Let's move on. But the majority of times they're going to turn it into business real quick. So it's always a business deal. It's always a transaction deal, no matter how you slice it. And the amount of lawsuits that you see flying around here are essentially one or two things. They're either a bachelor tax or they're either um, a pseudo alimony system allowing women to financially benefit from men they associated with but did not marry. Like, that's what's going on right now. It's a bachelor tax. It's a tax against men who avoid marriage, who use women's time and use them as objects or playthings, and or you think you're getting over on them and you're getting it for free, but you're going to pay. I always tell you, free women cost the most. You either pay on the front end, you certainly all play in the middle, and on the back end, you definitely pay. Most of the time, paying up front will minimize the back end damage. But men don't want to do that, obviously, because love, because men are in love, right? They want they, their egos attached to it. So you believe that when the woman gives her access to you for free, that it's free. But I always tell you when it's free, it costs the most on the back end. And this is certainly another case of this. And for those who are saying, hey, listen, these are celebrity men. He can afford to write the check. He can wipe his ash, his ash with the check, with that 32000 considering that his income is almost a half a million dollars. Yeah, it probably won't hurt him as much. He can get it directly deducted from his account and not miss it. And he, as a coach, he probably not spending a lot of that money, although I'm probably sure he's going to spend it a lot of up front in Houston. However, it's always far worse for the regular guy. For the regular guy like you and I, when we get ridiculous um, um, child support, situations like this where they come after your money and they get like you know 500 1000 1500 2000 3000 these things are killers for us they're painful for us and if you multiply that over many of years decade a decade plus these are basically the death nail to a male male's finances so it's actually worse when the incomes are lower for us fifty thousand dollars and below earners a year yes you and i um because i ain't got no job for us, it's way worse. It's way worse. So when they give us a $300, $500, $1,000, and the income uh, transaction goes like, hey, I make more than her, but they penalize me where with the child support coming into her door and she doesn't have to tell where what she's doing with the money, she makes more than me. She makes more than me. And then that actually puts me in the negative where now I got to find a way to live and also have custodial time with my kid. And it actually puts men at a disadvantage. So anyway, that is the update on that crazy situation there. But uh, considering the fact that it's 32000 and it could have been 56000 that would have been insane. But $32,000 is ridiculous. There's no need for a woman to be collecting that amount of money from a man. But here's the deal. The laws are the laws. The laws haven't changed. And all of you guys that think the laws have changed and that you can just jump into marriage because... Women are looking to pine for marriage and they're going to act like they're going to cooperate. I've been telling you, have a long memory. Have a long memory, guys. It ain't over yet till the laws change. And let's just be fair. Some of these red state politicians are trying to change the law. Women are the primary voters. 60% of the voting populace is women. So it's obviously going to go where the, the politicians are going to do what they want to do. But there are some red state politicians that are looking to change some laws because, yes, their population, their populace is dwindling with immigration, with the declining birth rate the last 12 years, with the declining marital rate. These red states are trying to reverse some of these no-fault divorce laws, these egregious child support laws. They're trying to reverse them, but the problem is it's a little too late. We don't want you to participate in this system until the laws have changed, and even then. I probably wouldn't do it, but guess whose fault it is. It is all Jermaine's fault. It's always Jermaine's Anyway, fault. man, hit the like button on this and enjoy the rest of your day. If you enjoyed this clip, 
Check me out on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel for the best morning live stream every weekday. And of course, we're back for the evening live streams as well. Check out the times in the feature channels on this channel right here. And also, the links are in the description box. I will see you there. New, 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 new world.